even at a popular level, we do speak about falsification. The view that's held by philosophers in general now is scientific holism, which is that sci scientific theories have to make sense within a sort of system. Even if something's technically falsified, um, it doesn't mean it's wrong. That's the new view that they have. So even if I was to answer the question, it'd be kind of redundant, because there, there are uh, ways that you can always change your assumption and re resurrect a dead theory. So as an example, if we were living in a Popperian time when Popper's view was popular, right? Um, we would say Darwin was very clear in The Origin of Species that gradualism is a fundamental assumption of his theory. In fact, T.H. Huxley tried to persuade him to take out gradualism, and he said, no, my theory is not going to work without gradualism. So he made it clear gradualism is a assumption in my theory. <coughs> gradualism has largely been admitted that this is false in the way that you know we have punctuated equilibrium. We have... Uh, uh, not, we don't have the story that we believed in terms of steady and slow uh, uh, evolution. However, someone can turn around and say, well, therefore, Darwin's wrong, therefore we can throw it out. That might have been possible in Popper's time, but now because we believe in scientific holism, uh, we can replace the assumption of gradualism, which Darwin had, with another assumption of, say, punctuated equilibrium or whatever. So you, you, you can you can technically resurrect dead theories even if there's direct uh, falsif falsifiable evidence that you've discovered. Uh, yes? But isn't then the problem that if you have scientific holism that the lines become very blurry, that there is no science or science, that it's just... Yeah, the demarcation problem is a huge problem. It's not been resolved. And it, this is a big, big issue. You're right. And this is very problematic. Yes? Um, so... Um, I was going to point out, you did mention it briefly that we're here talking about Islam and Darwinism, but not Islam and Einsteinism or, you know, quantum theory, which also got its own problem, the interpretation problem and so forth from, from Schrodinger and so forth. But does it because, so can you expand on that, why this is a thing? Is it because talking about human precisely and the other is just talking about atoms and, and fundamental matters. So that's fundamentally because if I was to say meet a, a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim and I was an atheist and I challenged their Genesis story, right? There would be a defensive mechanism automatically, right? It's the same thing. So if you flip the script, from an atheistic perspective, this is the Genesis story, from a materialistic point of view. And if there's these problems and these issues and these assumptions and what's going on, then if you're trying to project the idea that atheism is true and our Genesis story is also true, then when these things come up, there's obviously going to be a lot of defense mechanisms coming up and that there's going to be a lot of claims made which can't be substantiated using the evidence. And that's basically what's going on. It is, uh, biology is not supposed to be a battlefield between theists and deists and atheists. It's not, but it's become like that mm. within this field. So that's basically in a nutshell the answer. And, and, and like I recommended, Darwinism as a religion is a really good book to so uh, mainly because the Genesis thing, and, and because because it's theologically it makes if God doesn't exist then something like this has to be true by a necessity, hmm. right? So there, there's a there's a emotional psychodynamic psychodynamic investment in this being true from an atheistic perspective. However, you did then say actually Darwinism doesn't prove the existence or not existence yeah. of God. Yeah. And, and see, that, that's the point which I really want to emphasize. So if I had one minute, one minute to give a presentation on Darwin's theory, the only slide I would, big up, I would bring up is 
Oops. That's the only one I'd bring up. And I'd summarize to say, this is what Julian Huxley says, this is what Richard Dawkins says, this is what Michael Roos says, and Darwin would have completely disagreed that his theory disproves the existence of God. Everything else for me is fodder. Everything else for me is just not that important. Because that's why we're discussing this topic. That's why we're not speaking about Islam, string theory, and atheism. Yes? Um, so, for atheism and agnostics, Science is very appealing because it's based on empirical evidence. Yeah. So as a Muslim, what other than the beliefs that and the Muslim community and the beliefs that they hold around the Hadith, what what's the empirical evidence that your religion exists? And secondly, you say that if um, that Can I answer the first? Yeah, go for it. Thank you. So the first point is that there isn't an issue with ex accepting empirical data whether you're a theist or an atheist. What's more likely to lead somebody to become an atheist is if they turn away from purely a scientific um, appreciation to something which is more like scientism. And I think that's where the issue is. So science, valuing science and the contributions of science and using science, that's not an issue when it comes to Islam because Muslims are the ones who came up with the scientific method. So that's not a problem. The issue is scientism, and scientism is the idea that one, science is the primary way of knowing the world, and two, that scientific conclusions are seen as being true literally. Now, the second one we dealt with in the lecture, the first one we didn't deal with, but we can deal with that whether we commit to a religion or we don't commit to a religion. Science is not the only way of gaining knowledge about the world. Science is not the yardstick by which we measure truth, we discover truth. So this is where we have to break down the difference between scientism and science. Now, I've heard people myself say, I believe in science. And it's supposed to be a almost a, 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 a subtle way of saying I'm an atheist. And they say, I believe in science. But the problem is that what they've done is they've taken science and they've made it, they've made it into a worldview. Now, if we say, look, I'm only going to believe in things which are scientific, what you have to do is, you have to look at that claim, because science is based upon mathematics and logic. Mathematics and logic cannot be proven scientifically, but science is based upon them. So if someone says, I believe in science, well, you can't prove mathematics and logic. What's your name? Shruti. Shruti, right? So if I was to bring you up here, and in front of the class, and I was to bring some sort of machine, and it's a belief machine, and it brings up all of your beliefs on this board, right? Your beliefs which are deemed rational. You believe Madagascar exists. You believe you had a great, 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 great grandmother. You believe feeding orphans is good. And we took out your beliefs, and your beliefs were there. 99% of your beliefs could not be scientifically verified. They could not. So you believe in Madagascar existing, right? That's based on testimony, right? It's not scientific data. You've heard of Madagascar. You've seen people who say they're from Madagascar. You haven't been there yourself. It's not empirical data. Your belief in feeding orphans. That belief from a purely scientific point of view, if I was to take a microscope, telescope, whatever, and if you look, if you're to look at a situation in which you would infer some moral imperative, we've got to help that person. Scientifically, there's nothing there. Science has nothing to say about the existence of morals. Right? Now, if we were to do that with your brain, 99% of the beliefs that you hold to be rational and dear are not scientifically uh, verified. Then that gives you an idea that it's not just science is not the only way of getting to truth. Right? Now, we as Muslims, and you don't have to be a Muslim to realize this, there's a whole bunch of ways that human beings can arrive at truth. Science is one. Reason. Science is an attempt that we can try and reach out. There's reason, there's introspection. A lot of the moral uh, imperatives or moral feelings that we have, there is no scientific basis for them at all. So when you break down these things, there's many, many different ways of knowing. 
There is one difference if we're to make a list between someone who's agnostic and an atheist and someone who's a Muslim. And they're to list down the things of how they gain knowledge. Testimony, empiricism, reason, logic, maths, whatever, introspection. There's only one difference between the two. And that difference is, as Muslims, we do believe in something known as the fitrah. The fitrah is a natural state that a human being is born in. A natural state. And this natural state is awoken, and this is a natural state that has spiritual experiences. Apart from that, both lists would be identical, but we would have that extra component. But other than that, I believe anybody who uses their mind and tries to reason will realize a purely scientism type of perspective on knowledge doesn't help. But then, doesn't make sense. Why, okay, fine, if all Muslims have that, um, that introspection, like that, or you know, they're born with this idea No, we, we believe all human beings are, not only Muslims. We believe all human okay, beings are. Muslims fine. admit that this thing exists. Right, but then why, within the Muslim community, is there so much um, conflicting, like, do they have so many conflicting morals? That one Muslim will believe one thing, and another Muslim will believe another, but they're both practicing Muslims. Yeah. So why, why, where, where does that, like, um, okay. disparity come from? So the thing is, as Muslims, we would have a moral code, a moral imperative, but within that, you can have a scope for differences, right? So we do have this even in the world today. You may have two people who, even from an atheistic perspective, they both subscribe to consequentialism as a thing, but they can have differences within that. So we can have differences too. So if you have differences within that, how do you know what's the truth? They can both be true. So then there's not one truth, there's multiple truths. No, 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 no. Look, look, here's the Islamic dynamic on this, right? When you have a judge, and a judge makes a decision which happens to be based on a moral imperative, but it happens to be wrong, or it happens to be not, not the most just. As Muslims, we believe that that person is upon the truth and they're rewarded for that. But if he makes another decision, but this time he's right, and he's also, um, uh, he's used all of his capacity to come to the right decision, he will get double the reward for that. So we don't believe truth is plural or, or truth is relative, all the rest, but we believe human beings do what they can according to their capacity. So you have people who, they base their lives on, say, helping orphans, and you have other people who base their lives on trying to help widows. Now we don't say it's one way or the other way. Human beings are built in different ways. Right? And it's just like, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to remember a verse of the Quran, but, verse, but the meaning of that verse of the Quran is everyone works according to the way that they've been. I'm trying to remember that word. Yes, yes. Uh, what's the translation of that? <laughs> in his way. Every person works in like their unique way. Right? So that's how I'll answer that. Yeah. Um, if um, you say that um, if like uh, science doesn't exist, that no, if God doesn't exist, then it's necessary to believe in science. And no, not not necessary to believe in science. Necessary to believe in something like in, in something like Darwin. Darwin, right? Yeah. And you say that um, like science is based on maths and logic. We don't understand that fully. In, like we don't have any like ev empirical evidence for the. Uh, what it answers to logic and math and whatever. Why can it not just be that we just don't have the answers? Why do, does that have to then lead to God? Like, why can it just yeah, be that? No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You can't make the jump from, well, we don't know, therefore God. I agree with that. But that's not, that's not something I believe in. So we can't prove mathematics using empiricism ever. Doesn't even make any sense, right? And even the statement, science is the only way of looking at the world, we can't even prove that statement scientifically. <laughs> You're absolutely right that if somebody used to say, look, there's all this confusion, we're not really sure about this, so might as well turn to religion or God. That doesn't make any sense. But I wouldn't make that argument. I'd make a separate argument, right? And this, obviously this lecture isn't about why Islam is true or why I believe Islam is true. But I would say, if, I was to, if somebody used to come up to me and say to me, so why are you Muslim and not Hindu or atheist or something like this? And I would say that it's because of my, my conviction that Islam has a pure monotheistic understanding which awakens the natural way the human beings are built. Right? Now someone's gonna say, well that sounds very airy fairy and I can't really put that in a test to you, I can't really put that in a philosophy paper. I'd say, well, yeah, I agree with you, you can't. But 
That's the answer I would give. Yes. Uh, I'll ask you about uh, Darwinism. How do they look at uh, topics like uh, beauty and patterns and variety and animals? Why are not like uh, in one type of way or one uh, color or one stuff like that? Well, there's, there's two different things here. The first thing is that the environment's different. So you're going to have different <coughs> colors, different shapes, different forms. Or the patterns and the Same, yeah. same. You'd, you'd, have, you'd have different things, right? But in terms of beauty, aesthetics, and these types of things, fundamentally, and this is why the atheist worldview for me doesn't make any sense, fundamentally, love, hate, passion, morals, civilization, ethics, all of these things you essentially break down to a byproduct of the selfish need. And that for me makes no sense. Right? You can come up to me and say to me, all the biologists are in agreement that you know human morality can be broken down to you know, uh, chemicals and all these types of things and, 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 and a byproduct of a survival mechanism, I'll say that's bullcrap, right? No, I don't accept that. So for me, th there are things that we a priori, even before looking at evidence, know whether, whether this thing makes sense or not. Someone can give you a naturalistic explanation, but that explanation is not really giving you an explanation, it's, it's explaining it away. So when you have, say, Darwinists who say, we've worked out morality, here's a history of how it works, right? We first were selfish, and then we needed to be good to our kin, and then over time, natural selection made us forget that we were supposed to be good to our kin and gave us a shortcut, which is be good to those around you, and eventually you have this moral circle, which, which increased, you know, Peter Singer, you know, with the expanding moral circle, right? I would say that's total crap. That's not explaining morality. That's explaining morality away. That's reducing thing, it does, uh, is, is reducing it to something absurd, right? So we as human beings don't have to be held hostage to a purely materialistic, scientific, reductive understanding. And that's just something which generally isn't challenged, but it should be challenged. The idea that human beings can be broken down and analyzed and everything has to be explained scientifically. That doesn't make any sense. Yes? Clear, like um, if I understood it well, because I do biology and um, I think I can say that the only thing um, biologists can all agree on is that we just try to understand things. Yes. Like uh, 